The first word that comes to mind about Dr. Rosemary Vandenberg is powerful. She was a powerful woman, a powerful writer and a powerful teacher. No, oh, that's easy, Mum. <laughs> she was a fantastic woman. There's no other one like her. For me as a granddaughter, I'm going to say love. I'm Leanne and Rosemary Vandenberg was my mum. No, oh, I'm Jack Vandenberg and Rosemary was my soulmate. Dr. Rosemary Vandenberg was the first Aboriginal person in WA with a PhD and I'm really proud to have had her as my first academic. I think if Rosemary knew that this space was being named after her, she would laugh. She had a really iconic laugh. She'd be a little bit embarrassed, but I think she'd be exceptionally proud as well. She would have been really, really proud, absolutely proud. But I think she would have also been humble. There's no buildings at Murdoch named after women, so this will be our first. And for that to be an Aboriginal woman at that, one of the things I know about Bullock Hadigan is that it is somewhere that, and Murdoch as well, it makes you feel like you belong. You feel at home when you walk in here. And I think this building in particular, um, it is so beautiful, it is so stunning. It does overlook the Buja. Nana was someone who always made us feel like we belonged in, in university. We belonged at home, belonged in the world. And so I want everyone to feel that sense of belonging when they walk into here. Inspiration, I guess, is a better word than all. I want them to be inspired by her. I want them to feel proud. Perhaps the best piece of advice that Rosemary ever gave me as a student is that words are powerful um, and we have a responsibility to use those words really, really well because they have impact, not only for our community, but for broader society as well. Yeah, the pen is mightier than the sword. That was another thing she used to say. I think she just knew that education was powerful and that it would change your life. And also that in order to be able to fight a system or be able to advance our mob, that you know, getting an education was so important. A high school teacher told her once, you'll never amount to nothing. Yeah. <laughs> My nana had a lot of racism growing up, especially in school, and a lot of teachers wrote reports like they didn't believe in her and said she was a dumb little girl. And um, She will not amount to nothing. She's a fairy head or something. Yeah, airy fairy. Air, airy fairy. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, I think she proves that teacher wrong. <laughs> yeah. And one of the things about Nana was she was always was about making sure we fought for Aboriginal people and made sure we never forgot who we were and that no matter what we did and how successful we came, that we had that in our core to be able to help, you know, future generations and fight for future generations. I think Rosemary was such a great example of somebody who used university knowledge and her own community and cultural knowledge to really forge a path for Aboriginal women to come through university to make an impact in a way that they wanted to have impact. And she was such a fantastic example of that. So she really was a trailblazer for many Noongar women particularly. And I remember being a young person and getting invited to the university and they had this big celebration event for her with her grandchildren and just seeing that thinking I want to you know follow in Nana's footsteps one day it was such a huge achievement. It's a funny thing I mean she didn't even worry that much about the doctor prefix she hardly put it anywhere you know but yes she was very proud of it but it was some not something she would you know, go brag around here, I'm the doctor, or put everything, I'm a doctor, you know. She never did. And her smile, eh, Dad? That cheeky smile. Yeah, I miss her every day. I know, I know. we all do, Dad. You know, buildings do last a long time, and this her legacy is going to be here, and people are going to know who Dr. Rosemary Vandenberg is, so, yeah. <laughs>